Like thunder, like lightning, the way you love me is frightening. You've got to knock, knock, knock on wood. This is from BM Home Stores in the UK. It cost £5, as you may notice. And it's a light and sound thunder straw, but it sounds very exciting. Thunder sounds, lightning flashes. I get the feeling there's going to be a distinct lack of bass here, but you can judge for yourself. So here's the unit, and it looks like a classic strobe. It has the sound on, well, I'm not even sure how that goes. It's got the LEDs in the end, and it's got a battery compartment. The battery compartment has a screw to stop small children eating the batteries. I don't know if that really happens that much, but I suppose it's more likely to happen with button cells. I'm not really sure why they put screws in these. They're just annoying. That is not unscrewed yet. One moment, please, while I just finish the job that I started. There we go. So I've got some batteries here. I've got some JCB batteries. They don't just make excavators. They apparently also make double A cells. I'm not totally convinced about that. Let's try this. Uh, it says strobe. I'll warn you in case there is strobing. Hold on. So... That is it, right? The other modes, this will strobe, is just, uh, it's not very bright, to be honest. Oh, it's really not bright at all. Anyway, I was hoping it was going to do things like have a variable delay and have different sound effects, but apparently that was over-optimistic for such a cheap device. Uh, let's grab another screwdriver. And we'll pop the lid and we'll see what's inside. Probably not a lot. Is it going to be a blob chip? Or is it going to be one of those dedicated sound chips that uh, also has sort of basic microcontroller type functionality? Although I did notice that the sound was just, uh, the LEDs just seem to go with the sound. So I wonder if they're connected across the speaker. We'll find out when we open it up. It is disappointing. <laughs> what do you expect? Inside is a little speaker tacked to the back. It's hot, uh, staked onto the back. Uh, the circuit board has a little 8-pin chip in it. And then it's uh, got the LEDs on it as well, right? Tell you what, I'm going to get this out uh, and we'll take a closer look at it. One moment, please. The reverse engineering is done. Let's explore. I also want to mention that this is an 8-ohm speaker, a little quarter-watt speaker. I replaced it with a really big speaker, well, a big air speaker, to actually see if it improved the bass. No, it didn't. It was excruciating. I didn't include that in the video because it was ear piercing, very excruciating, whistling treble. That It was very unpleasant. Um, so here's the circuitry. There are five LEDs in parallel and they are controlled via a little MOSFET here. Interesting, the MOSFET is a 00A8C which is equivalent to an HX2300. Why didn't they just write HX2300 in that? I don't know why they do that. There's a 51 ohm resistor to limit the current through the LEDs. It switches to the negative rail. Uh, there's a little ceramic capacitor here, but they've bodged a 100 megafarad capacitor across it. Presumably there were processor stability issues for whatever this mysterious chip is. Um, and uh, it has uh, two outputs in that chip go directly to the speaker. I wonder if that's just data lines or if it's actually got an audio driver in it. Maybe it's a dedicated purpose chip. It does appear to have three logic inputs and I get the feeling this is a universal circuit board used for other things because there's a very strange bit in the circuitry. Right, you've seen the circuitry. Uh, I'm wondering if the 4.7k resistor here is to allow the use of an NPN transistor. But they've used a MOSFET. They're so common these days that they're probably just saying, well, let's stick one in. It has advantages. That is ferocious. Not any longer, it isn't. Mystery chip. Its quiescent current is 4 microamps, which is just as well, because when you actually put batteries in, uh, it's directly powered at that point. And it's very odd. There's the, uh, there's the switch that controls uh, the mode, and it switches between three positions the positive rail between three positions, one of which is off, one of which is the storm mode with this sort of lightning effect, and the other which is the strobe mode. I wonder why they've got that off position. It makes me think that maybe the unit is designed to have three functions, but that's a very strange thing. 
There's a speaker, 8 ohm speaker, there's a 4.7k resistor coming out to the MOSFET, the 51 ohm resistor, the LEDs, and then the little ceramic capacitor there uh, and the uh, electrolytic just dabbed straight across, well, effectively the supply where it comes on from the battery pack. Uh, very strange circuitry that this, the fact that the off actually connects the positive to an off, a, sig a logic input to tell it that it's off, is unusual. That just makes me think that they've not... I mean, they could have just left that floating, surely? Or maybe just they need it pulled to a particular logic state, but then the others are left floating when the switch is off. Let's brighten this up again. Yeah, but that's very strange. Strange little circuit, very annoying little circuit. I think the best thing you could do with this is actually uh, hack it to basically just power the LEDs directly, just take power directly to the LEDs via a resistor and just use it as a little uh, LED floodlight because as a strobe, it's very weak. Um, and uh, as the lightning effect, it's just annoying because I would have thought that perhaps they could have written the software to just every so often go and just strobe and then a wee pause and then another just maybe a different sound effect and alternate between a few sound effects with random or just a decent delay in between but the fact it just minces over the same effect over and over again is actually quite annoying but uh, the case is nice the case has the battery pack built in it's got a switch built in it's got the LED and reflector assembly, just like the usual little strobe light. So it does have hackability. And in the past, I have hacked these. I've uh, used them for garden lighting by just putting green LEDs in, into the reflector here. Um, and uh, just basically having it so when you turn the switch and the battery pack on, there's a resistor, resistor and it just lights the green LEDs. Makes a nice little spotlight in the garden for lighting foliage. But this isn't actually something I'd recommend. I mean, by all means, get it for the case. It's a nice case. But uh, the circuitry and the effect itself is not that pleasant. It's uh, just a little bit irritating. The novelty will wear off. You will turn it off. But as I say, nice case, worth getting just for the case.